Good morning, Bulldogs. Welcome to another edition of Virtual Instruction with a special shout out to today's Black Seven, who is their day on the schedule, and to everyone else uh, tuning in to catch up with us. On today's May 21st, 2020, and it's Thursday. Um, today's music is by Horace Height and his orchestra, uh, a band leader in the United States from California. This was basically the type of music my grandparents listened to. Um, before he was famous, when he went to college at University of Berkeley, he was actually a guard on the football team. Uh, he was a singer, a pianist, a band leader, and a TV personality. He had several different types of talent shows on TV. Um, several people became famous because of it. You may have heard of um, Art Carney, if your parents ever watched The Honeymooners or Grandparents. Um, he actually was the first host of TV talent shows. So he was the original Dick Clark, the original Ryan Seacrest. Like before Ryan Seacrest, there is Horace Height. Um, unfortunately, he died in 1986, and he's buried out in L.A. Uh, side note, this was the song um, that my tap dance recital was too when I was like in first grade uh, back in the 80s. I'm not as old as this song from the 40s, okay? It was already an old song back then. It's a little disclaimer, but uh, we had to dress up like ponies while we tap dance in white tap shoes in, in front of the fence. All right, now um, let's talk a little bit about what happened on this day. Remember, you should be um, putting uh, in your timeline still. You don't need to put all of these things. One per is probably sufficient, but if you haven't been doing them at all over a lockdown, maybe then I'd put more than one. Um, next week, you will learn about your end of year timeline assignment, how that's going to unroll. And if you've been doing it all year, which I know Block 7 has been really good at, you should be fine. All right, 90 seconds. Um, so here's some big events. In 1851, slavery was abolished in Colombia. Realize this is over a full decade before it's abolished in the United States. Um, in 1881, Clara Barton, who you see pictured here, she established the American Red Cross in Washington, D.C. You may have learned or you will learn in U.S. history if you haven't yet about um, her role in the Civil War um, and the nursing corps. Um, Biomed people in particular, you may want to read a little bit about her today. A little bit of STEM history. Um, if you watched the video yesterday, you learned about Amelia Earhart being the first woman to cross the Atlantic. Well, in 1927, uh, Charles Lindbergh landed in Paris, um, and that was the world's first nonstop flight by oneself all the way across the Atlantic. So you see um, up in there um, the newspaper. Uh, of what it looked like. There's a picture of him in front of his plane. I know that's small. That's the spirit of St. Louis. You can still see that plane today in the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., if it ever opens, but you can go see it virtually now. Um, and notice how he, um, the, the route there he took. Uh, in 1972, Michelangelo's Pieta, which is something we learned about during the Renaissance, you see above was damaged by a vandal. Laszlo Toth, who was a Hungarian, actually um, was from Australia though. It's a really interesting story, uh, crazy story. Go look uh, this up if you wanna learn more about that. Okay, so um, the New York Times in 90 seconds today. Uh, so a lot of facts and figures here today. It is Thursday, um, so we know that's our unemployment figures day. Um, they expect it to level off this week, so about another two and a half million reported unemployment claims. They don't think it's going to decline yet. Decline, they think it's just sort of hitting a plateau for now. Now, the chart to the left, you'll see the the news that um, scientists who've been researching uh, this virus uh, believe that the delay in enforcing or starting our lockdown actually led to thirty six thousand more deaths. Um, so the idea is that if we started lockdown, you know, if we ended schools and everything closed a week before it did, 36,000 less people would have died. So, you know, something we should take note of and learn about as, you know, as of now, all 50 states are reopening in some form. Our states are reopening much gradually and in less degrees than other states because we're still hit pretty hard. Um, but we need, should learn about that. Do we need to step back and put more measures in place if outbreaks come again or what or what should we do so 
good article to read, whether you're biomed or just a person alive in the world today. Um, and another unfortunate story about the racial divide in COVID-19. We all know how nursing homes seem to get hit really hard with this virus, but they're saying that nursing homes with Black and Latino residents um, are being hit much harder with it. And it gives possible reasons why that is. And it also says authorities need to investigate more on why that is. So feel free to look that as well. The image here is from Osaka, Japan. And you see once again that the streets are empty. Okay, so the BBC in 90 seconds. Um, we've hit a milestone, not a good milestone by any means. Um, but there's now more than 5 million cases reported worldwide of the virus, not deaths, but um, cases. And as we all know, they say those numbers are probably actually much, much higher because not everyone uh, got tested uh, from this, but it's an important figure nonetheless. Um, an interesting story from the BBC is that the United States actually is having more lethal um, accidents. They're saying there's actually, so they're saying in the US there's 18 percent drop of miles that are driven in the United States. I thought it would be even more than that. How many people haven't been driving lately? Um, but they said there's a decrease in accidents, but the accidents that are around are more lethal um, because of people driving faster. So not a good number. Kolkata is in eastern India. You can see that image here. Um, there was a cyclone and it leaves scores dead. Score is 20. We don't use that word much in the United States. Um, but I think 84 is the number of deaths, um, and it went off into Bangladesh. And the chart is of um, cases reported in the UK. Okay, so um, what we're doing today. So um, we have a three-day weekend um, from our virtual instruction, and um, I have one more assignment we're going to do on our imperialism unit before we move on to our unit on the world wars. But I do want to pause um, for a day where we reflect on um, Memorial Day. So it's not going to be a normal Memorial Day. Oops. That was for the last one. Um, with everything still locked down, but there still should be, um, you know, some sort of remembrance to this day. So this image here is actually from Southern Regional High School, uh, where I went to high school. And it every year, uh, every student, and it's almost the size of like PCVTS, there's about 4,000 students, um, puts out um, a flag um, in the front lawn so that people that drive by see. Um, and I think they put enough flags that there's one for every person who's been killed in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So you can see how moving it is not only to place a flag, but to drive by and see that many flags out there. Um, so um, you're going to do the assignment today on Flipgrid. Um, we did really well the last time uh, you guys did an assignment on Flipgrid, so I wanted to do it here again. This is like our journal. Um, I give you um, directions on Canvas and a document. Please make sure you read it. Um, for example, yesterday's classes, some people did some really great um, videos, but they didn't necessarily hit some of the points um, I requested, so I want to make sure you're doing that. So if you um, open up that document, you'll see I have five bullet points. Um, and I want you to make sure that you know the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. So Veterans Day, which we honor in November, um, is to honor all veterans, specifically war veterans, um, that are alive, people that served. Whereas Memorial Day honors people who made the ultimate sacrifice and died in war. Okay, so big difference, right? Memorial Day is for those who passed away serving. So you can, there's five bullet points. Um, you can cover one of them, two of them, three of them. If you want to get a three or a four, which is a, your goal, you want to cover at least four of those points. Um, so something that you can do to honor the holiday, if you say like, you know, you normally have a barbecue, that's a nice thing to do. But what do you do actually honor the holiday? You see how there's a difference? Um, of course, you know, those things will be different this year. The, um, the pandemic is changing how you both celebrate it and honor it, but think that in mind. Um, also, I encourage you to listen to others and to respond to their points as well, um, like it's a normal class, as normal as possible. Okay, so just please make sure you're 
um, sharing some of these things I outlined here. Um, I gave you a 10 minute option. It, it needs to be nowhere near five minutes. You can probably do all of this in two minutes, but just for those of you who really want to elaborate on every point, I opened it up. Okay. So, um, hope it's sort of a relaxed assignment, um, but still do your best. Um, we'll do one more assignment on imperialism when we come back next week. Um, enjoy your weekend as much as you can under virtual instruction um, while still remembering the significance of today. I'm proud of you guys and everything that you've been doing under these circumstances. I really am. Um, and I miss you and I'll see you soon. Soon enough, right? Be well, guys.